Okay, here in lecture 21, the title is, What are the six stages, six stages of spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. Now, in the Bible, in the Bible, we can tell there are at least six levels of Christians. In other words, there are six different spiritual standings, spiritual level. Okay? Not all Christians are the same in terms of uh, uh, spiritual maturity. Okay? Uh, this time, there are at least six levels of Christians uh, in a, a Christian community. After uh, we know this, then you have a spiritual discernment as you look at the person what level that person uh, is so you treat the person accordingly okay so it is very important so lecture here 21 22 23 24 all these upcoming lectures will We'll deal with these issues. Okay? Yeah. Now, according to the Bible, there are six spiritual levels. Now, first level... First level, it's a infant, infant level, infant Christians, infant level. It's a newly born, like those uh, Israelis who just uh, just came out of that Red Sea. Okay, just who arrived in the wilderness. So we just consider them as infant, newly born Christians. Okay? That in Greek word, I will give you Greek word, nepios. So you remember this. And when you teach your people, you teach that Greek word as well. Nepios. Nepios. Okay? Now... I will give you some Bible references as to this. First Corinthians <clears throat> three one, and Paul says to Corinthian Christians, "Okay, because those Christians who were so much in jealousy amongst each other and stripes, meaning." fighting each other and dividing each other. So Paul calls them, you are infant Christians. Okay? Nepios Christians. So there are many such Christians, you know, in our church communities. So I will give you uh, other uh, in the Galatian church also, Galatian 4.1 and Ephesian 4.14, even Hebrew 
5 through 10. All these Bible references uh, indicate that there are many baby, not, I would say instead of baby, I will call it infant. See? Infant Christians. What? One of the characteristics of these Christians, you can see, they do not have teeth to bite. No teeth. See? No teeth. Therefore, only can suck milk. Milk Christians. Okay. Here, Paul says right here that I cannot give you solid food. Solid food. In other words, that it's a solid Bible word. Food means word of God. Okay. So I cannot give you solid food where you cannot digest. Okay. Not only digesting, you cannot even bite. So I'm giving you milk so that you can just take it. Since you guys are infant, infant Christians. So it's nepious Christians. Okay. That I would, I would say the age, age in a, in a physical sense. Okay. I would say it's about one to two. One to two years old. Age. These Christians, as a matter of fact, they are majority in a church around the world, your countries as well. So we have to deal with those people according to their spiritual level. So you should have that spiritual discerning power okay, over those people. Now, the second, second level we call the child Christians. Infant and child. In Greek word, it's a very famous Greek word, paideon. Paideon, paideon. Nepios and paideon. They are a little bit, a little bit better. In the in an age, I would say around three to nine, three to nine years old. A Pythian child and children. In the Bible, it uses Pythian language. In Matthew eighteen. And John 13, 13. Even first John 2 18. Okay? Matthew 18, 2, John 13, 13, first John 2 8. In, in your Bible, you know, translations are not clearly divided between this infant and child. Therefore, sometimes it's very difficult to make distinctions. However, in an original Greek language, clearly different. Now, Third level is teenagers. Teenager. In Greek world is a technion. Technion. Their age, I would say, around 10 to 17 years old. Teenagers. I'm sorry, I, I, I wrote down different mm, child, no, no. I made a mistake. 
Okay, right here. Okay, the child is Matthew 18, 2, and Luke, Luke 1, 80, and 1 John 2, 18. Okay. Now, in teenager, 10 to 17 years old is John 13, 13. And 1 John 2, 12. That's a teenager. And number four, it's a youth. And they are niscos. It's a first John two thirteen and five. It's a son and Huios Matthew. Five, nine, and forty five, and Romans eight, fourteen. Now, see, Bible heavily dealing with, Bible heavily dealing with. This infant, infant, especially in, in, in the Paul's letter, okay, very seldom uses this child, Pideon. Very seldom uses teenager, Technion. Very seldom they are niscos, but heavily dealing with the infant. That tells us the, in those Christians, in first century Christians, okay, most of them are that they were infant Christians. Okay? I would say throughout the church history, okay, majority Christians were uh, infant Christians. So we will deal with that later in more in detail. Now, we are in details, okay? Now, the sun level is very important. It's not, it's not a capital letter S. It's a small letter S, sun. Okay? This is very high position. <clears throat> high position. Now, uh, uh, Jesus mentioned this. Jesus mentioned in, you know, in the Beatitude here. The Sermon on the Mount in the Beatitude here. Blessed are those, blessed are those. See? Here's it. Blessed are those who are peacemakers. Okay? They shall be called Huios of Deus. Deus means God. The, it's Son of God. It's not Jesus Christ. Okay? The, it's a, it, Jesus uses it plural. Sons of God. In a small letter S. Okay? That's a very high position. Very high position. And my, my desire in your life, God would elevate you up to that position. Okay? This son's position. Then he said this in his Sermon on the Mount in verse 45. Who will be the sons of God? He said this. If you love your enemies... You even pray for your enemies, okay? Then you shall be called sons of God. Very high, it requires very high spirituality and also very uh, high holy character. It's very highly demanding qualification, sons of God. Got it? Yeah. 
But uh, some Bible references, uh, I just look at the King James. King James translated Huios, okay? I, I do not agree with the King James translation. It says, children of God, he said that. Okay? That children is not Huios. Yeah. It's a Huios. But other Bible translations, such as NIV and New American Standard, and other Bible translations uh, translated it the sons of God. Okay? Therefore, NIV is right from the original, original text. So don't, don't forget that. It depends on, you know, which Bible you, you, you take. Okay? But it's not a children of God. Okay? Children means over there. Child is a Paideon. That's why we, sometimes you have to double check with the original text. The translators, uh, uh, not by their own intention, but for some reasons, translated some key terminologies a different way. For that reason, Sometimes you have to consult with many different versions of Bible. Okay? Particularly, uh, you know, each your nations have your own Bibles, but those, my concern is where your, your, your translation uh, originated from and who translated it. That's important. Now, here... It's the same here. Those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, in Romans said, those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, they will be called the sons of God. A very high level. Okay? And final, highest level is father. In Greek word called pater. Pater, father. It's a First Corinthians four fifteen. Now, father is the highest position. Okay, father, it's the highest position. Pater, Paul says himself to Corinthian Christians that you Corinthian Christians, I am. A father of you. I am a spiritual father. Okay? It's higher than son level. Now here, do you remember last time uh, we had a it, Israelis they crossed the Red Sea and arrived in the wilderness. Remember? Those who arrived in the wilderness. Do you remember Abraham, Abraham in Genesis 15, 13, 16? Abraham received the message from Jesus by saying this, that Jesus told Abraham that someday your children will be enslaved in a country and later in four generations after, that means 400 years after, they will come back to this land. See, that message was received here in the land of Canaan. Okay, in Hebron, in Hebron. According to that prophecy, 
Israelis should come back to the land of Canaan instead of wilderness. So there is no such a remark uh, mentioned by Abraham, okay, the wilderness. It's, it, the wilderness is, is out, of, out of game. It, that is not the purpose of God's uh, okay, deliverance, these people. It's, 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 wilderness is kind of, as I told you before, it's a detour, 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 root. Remember? Yeah. Remember in Exodus, last time it's 13, uh, 17, and 18. You know? Remember that? Remember this. Right after the moment, uh, the King Pharaoh says, okay, you may go. Okay, from that moment, they were saved out of that Satan's bondage. The moment, moment that Pharaoh said, okay, that, cause that means that those Egyptian, the Israelis got saved on the land of Egypt. Okay, moment, that moment. Now, right after that salvation, according to Abrahamic covenant, they should uh, march direct to the land of Canaan instead of uh, the wilderness, okay? Wilderness was, n was not mentioned by God. Now, here, in order to go back to Canaan, they have to travel like that. Like that, okay? But here in Exodus, 13, 17, 18, last time I told you, okay? These people, in order to arrive in the land of Canaan, they have to go through this Gaza. It's a Gaza, Gaza. Gaza's area. Gaza. That is a Philistine territory. Even today, the Gaza area is occupied by Philistine. Okay? Now, to go, they have to go through, they have to pass Gaza area where Philistines settled. Now, Jesus told Moses, Moses, if in the event you travel that way, which is shortcut way, then you Israelis will be very much in fear of Palestinians. In consequences, they would say, let us go back to Egypt. So they will go back to Egypt, which Jesus predicted. Okay? Therefore, you see, therefore, you have to change your travel route, okay, to that direction, which is crossing the Red Sea and arrive in the wilderness, although that is a long, long detour way, but that will be a much safer way for your people. Okay? So now it's Exodus 13, 17, 18 is a turning point. Okay? Why they had to go through that wilderness? Are you with me? Okay? Then, in a spiritual sense, they were newborn infant, infant Christians. 
Okay, no teeth. The infant Christians cannot fight against strong Philist Philistines enemies. Okay, no fighting ability whatsoever. No spiritual fighters, infant Christians. Therefore, God diverted them to the wilderness. Okay, so although they arrived in the wilderness, okay, as a newly born Christians, they always thinking of old Egyptian lifestyle. See, Egyptian food and Egyptian memory. Why? Because they were born in Egypt. Now, let me give you a question. Here, in Abrahamic covenant, it was a God's design that I will make your people settled in Egypt for 400 years. 400 years. This is very, very interesting, you know, point right here. Why 400 years? Now, you see, always in a biblical a numerical system, it's a numeric system. Okay, numeric system, number four means, number four means preparation. Preparation, preparation, and also training out of hardship. Preparation and training out of hardship. Very hard training. That's always God uses four numbers. Noah's flood, 40 days. Noah's flood, 40 days. In 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness, number four. Okay. Even 40 days the spies, Remember spying? Yeah. 40 days of spying. Even Jesus fasted 40 days before his public ministry. 40 days. Jesus fasted before his public ministry. Even after the Resurrection of Jesus. Jesus did not go back to the paradise immediately. Instead, he stayed in this land for 40 days. 40 days. Why? Because he has to prove himself that I am God. God of resurrection. Okay, not only that, he gave the great commission to his disciples five times during those 40 days. It's all these trial and preparations and testing period, number four. Got it? In the same way, right here, here, why God designed those Israelis settled in Egypt for 400 years? That is our question. Why 400 years? Because it was God's perfect design that, see, he, his intention was to make Israelis fully integrated into Egyptian 
In other words, he wants to make Israelis perfect Egyptian. Okay. God thought it would take 400 years. Generation, generation, generation down. They will forget eventually their Hebrew identity in ways of using Egyptian language, Egyptian lifestyle, and Egyptian culture. Not only that, Egyptian serving Egyptian God, that is a golden carp. Remember golden carp? Yeah, golden carp? Yeah, that's Egyptian God. It calls Apis. Apis God. That is a golden God, golden carp. That was an Egyptian God. So when they, when they left Egypt and arrived in the wilderness, these Israelis, okay, in a physical sense, they were Israelis, but in their mental sense, okay, they were Egyptians. Egyptians. So their way of thinking, their world view, and their, all their mentality was they were Egyptians. Now, Egyptians means, in a spiritual sense, it is non-Christians, okay? In satanic, uh, a Satan word, in satanic children, in a, in a sense, the, in a spiritual, uh, you know, interpretations, in other words, that those Israelis who were born, not only born there, but they were fully integrated into Egyptian community. Now delivered from that community, okay, although they delivered, they were delivered, their mentality, their worldview, their religion was what? Egyptian. Okay, in the same way, those Christians, say God chosen people not yet saved. Okay, your friends and your families and all the people here. Even I, I'm now I'm now going to tell I'm, I'm going to tell it. So in a, in a, our 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 community here, people who just received Jesus as a personal savior. Okay, say at the age of 50. Okay, so 50 years he had lived in Egypt. Okay, fully, fully controlled by Egyptian lifestyle. And then now he received Jesus as a savior. He became a Christian. Now, this person will be acting just like those Israelites arrived in wilderness. So it will take time. It will take time to make them spiritually mature. Now, you see, it's clear that what, what is the purpose of Entering land of Canaan. Would you write down your note then? What is the purpose of entering Canaan? To occupy the Canaan. Okay? In a way of destroying Canaanites. Okay? In order to do that, you have to fight. So the story of Joshua, who arrived in Canaan, it was nothing but fighting stories. 
and also a uh, book of judges. Nothing but fighting stories. Out of that, expanding their territories. Okay. Now, later, in the time of David, BC 1000, David was the king who finally occupied the entire land of Canaan. It took quite a, around 500 years from the time of Moses. That's why the King David is so well known, respected, because he is the one eventually, eventually fulfilled the Abrahamic covenant. Remember that? Now, he is the one. So it took from Abraham to King David 1,000 years. So this Abrahamic covenant them thousand years, one thousand years, one thousand years. Now, let me tell you this. So, entering Canaan means this those who cannot fight against the Canaanites cannot enter the Land. Only those fighters can enter the land. So now, let's look at this table here. Who will be a fighters, spiritual fighters? Starting what age? I will give you age here. By the unit 3-9. Teenager, I just figure about 10 to 17, and youth is uh, youth is 18 to 24, and son is 25 to 32, and father is 32 and on. I just classify this. Are you okay? You have to write it down, this. Now, here. Then, in what age can enlist the military forces? You look at this. In what age in your country can, can join the military to fight? Huh? Yeah. See, over, over here is a dividing line here. Dividing line. Now, that shows us those Israelis who settled in wilderness. Okay, how many? How many years? Forty years. Then our question is this. Why 40 years? Do you remember that? Remember, I told you before, okay? 40 days spying, but because of the negative, negative response, negative response means 10 leaders, 10 leaders of 10 tribes gave Moses a negative Respond. Now, negative respond means what? We cannot enter the land of Canaan because they are stronger than us. So they did not have fighting spirit. Okay? That means they are spiritually infant. Although they were leaders. No fighting spirit at all. No vision for fighting. But by the grace of God, two gentlemen, Caleb and Joshua, although 
they were infant at the time. Caleb and Joshua, although they were infant, but by the grace of God, it's it, it, it now grace. By the grace of God, those infants, spiritual infant, okay, boldly, okay, crying out to say that, yes, we can go. We, we have a power to fight. You see? Can you see that? It's different, different people. So, aha, you see, are those two gentlemen must be predestined, okay, predesigned, okay, by the grace of God to enter the land. Now, then because of this, 40 days, and he counted what? One day equals one year makes 40 years because of that. Okay? So your people will stay in this land for 40 years. Okay? Then our question is why 40 years? Because that 40 years, okay, in 40 years, all these first generation Israelites, okay, who were born in Egypt, who were born in Egypt, will consumed. That means will destroy, will die in the wilderness. Okay? So they will not, they cannot enter the land of Canaan. Why? Because they, they were so much occupied by the Egyptian culture. Egyptian mentality, Egyptian lifestyle, they could not remove those cultures. Okay? It was embedded in their body, in their heart. It, it was impossible to remove it. So, although 40 years in the life of wilderness under the control of the Holy Spirit, majority of them Okay, remained in spiritual infant level, majority, and spiritual child level, and some of them spiritual teenager level. As a result, they were not qualified for joining military forces. Okay? So we are considering this. Those who were born in Egypt and settled in the wilderness, majority are infant Christians, and some of them are child Christians, and very mi minority are teenager Christians. We apply this principle to our situations, okay? So in your congregations, among your congregations, majority are infants and child and teenagers. How do we, how, how can we classify them? Okay? You see their mentality, their way of lifestyle, okay? Whether they, they, they are still heavily occupied by the world the lifestyle or not. It, it, it depends on the degree of Egyptian world lifestyle and, and thinking and their value system and their world view. So I will give you that spiritual guideline. Okay? So now, these people here, 
these people. Would you write down? Now, these people, youth and son and father, they have, now they are military forces. Okay? These people in the history of this wilderness, okay, these people, they, those who are born in the wilderness, they were born in the wilderness. That means not much affected by Egyptian culture. Not much known by Egyptian culture. Okay? They entered the Canaan. And so they are fighting soldiers. So we just... And... And crossing Jordan River means, crossing Jordan River means the, the experiencing the Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. Okay? Experiencing the Pentecost, the, the full, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, crossing the Jordan River. So these people, in order to fight, they ought to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, that is the beginning of the Jerusalem church. The Jerusalem church members, was, was members were fighters over over. Roman Empire evangelism. Roman Empire. They were soldiers. Now, I don't want to go much in detail later. Uh, now, but uh, I will talk, I'll tell you later. Okay, now, so these three groups are mature fighting groups. Okay, not only that. Not only that. There is a, they are the one who can reproduce their adult here, in a physical sense here, adult in a spiritual sense. They can reproduce their descendants, which means you, you, they, you, you, you will evangelize sharing the gospel with other people and, 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 and make people born in Jesus. Evangelism. Not only that, after the baby was born, you have to make, give them a nutrition. You have to care, care them, providing them nutrition so that the discipleship, discipleship. These people are the ones who give, who are doing this, okay? Make people grow, grow, okay? Up until, up until, your, 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 your disciple will make their disciples. Okay? So now here, six stages of spiritual growth. It help you? One, two, three. One, two, three. And don't forget this principle right here, wilderness, wilderness Christians. Therefore, it is your responsibility to make your Christians, okay, your, your congregations upgrading their levels from infant to child, child to teenagers. That is, you pastors, of your obligation, you up. You help them to upgrade their spiritual levels. Okay? So that you teach this them. This is a principle, biblical principles in spiritual growth and their characteristics right here. Okay? You have to teach them. Then they know where they are at. Then they will have a desire to move on, upgrade themselves. Are you with me? Yes. Great. Thank you. Based on this, 
I will teach you next, next issue. Okay? Let's take about 10 minutes break and come back.